Have you ever noticed how it never really gets dark anymore? We are here outside the Working Men's Club in Pollard's Row, Bethnal Green. I am about to go in there and I'm about to read GLOW to uh, a load of photography students from the University of East London. This one's about um, neurology based. So I photographed a tree that was um, lit by artificial light at night. So as you can see here, it um, represents the brain wiring inside the brain, how um, our thoughts are powered by artificial things, basically. So. Even during the putative Earth daytime, we delight in toiling away in halogen dungeons. And this photograph here, I photographed um, two pictures together. I photographed one on a DLR train, of a train track, and one of my model subjects. And I wanted to capture the light coming out of the model's um, third eye as a representative of this is all we think about. All we think about at night is depending on artificial light and everything except for the darkness. So the light in this photograph represents um, almost like a god. Of course, one of the primary facets of addiction is that one can never see it in oneself. How it never really gets dark anymore. Even during the putative Earth daytime, we shun elemental light for the delights of toiling away in halogen dungeons, getting pixel burn on the back of our retinas. Of course, one of the primary facets of addiction is that one can never see it in oneself. It has become second nature to stagger, blinking from ourselves, peering at the backlit screen that we have not had the nerve to peek at for the last four hours. Scurrying forth in search of buses, permanently illuminated inside and out for fear of litigation. Or down holes in the ground, similarly fitted out for very similar reasons. Red-eyed and fevered, we stumble home and fumble, reach for the switch, hold the cord, turn the dial. Made uneasy by silence, by stillness, but most of all by darkness. We have since birth been taught to fear true elemental darkness. It is a species memory that we simply cannot erase. It is this primal dread that created the spark, that created the fire. We once clustered around, not without reason in truth. Beasts once lived in the woods of England and still do, or the salt in its alleyways. But that's not it, is it? As children, we feared the thing under the bed would get us once the switch was flicked, but we are children no more, surely. The monsters are all banished back into our imagination. All we have to fear in the night is our own reflection, and that is our collective terror. We fear being alone in our own heads. It's why we need our heads. But it hurts, doesn't it? This eternal monochrome. It varies in its intensity, but you couldn't call it light. It's as though the states of light and darkness have reached some form of negotiated peace, brokered by phosphorescent middlemen. We have merely negated a negation. Don't your eyes hurt? You're so tired, aren't you? We are slowly losing our circadian perspective. That thing in the sky is no lily to be eternally gilded in its presence, then replicated when it leaves us. So, we've attained the power to negate the heavens. Masters of the universe, but we have lost our anchors, our objects. It is no easy thing to face the day when one no longer knows where it begins or ends. From a distance, it all looks so beautiful. A bowl of precious gems sparkle on the horizon. Strings of pearls beckon us to follow them like breadcrumbs out of the forest of safety. If only we had known it's just not worth it. The raised blood pressure, the muscle spasms, the increased risk of cancer, the sagging cheekbones. Switch it all off, why don't you? Watch the LEDs die away and exhale. Just close your eyes and accept that we all sleep alone. 
you'll feel better in the morning. What was that noise? Oh, trust me, it's probably nothing. 